It's obvious to me, especially today, that there's a lot more things um, that are going on in this world that are important, but to be here with our EOD family tonight is a commitment that we're all uh, blessed by. Um, so we're looking forward to your comments. I want to introduce our 31st uh, Chief of Naval Operations. Most importantly, an honorary Master Chief Petty Officer, which is a big deal in our Chief's mess, um, Admiral John Richardson. Thank you, sir. I do, um, I do have a quick plaque for you. I'm going to give it to your aide, but I want to present it while we're on stage, if you don't mind. Sure, yeah. <clears throat> Just says, with sincere appreciation for speaking this evening. So thank you, sir, for being here. Hey, thanks very much. Thank you. I'll take that down for you. Well, that's the first time I got paid before I ever did anything, so... Uh... <clears throat> Hey, listen, I just want to say what a, a privilege it is to be here tonight. Thank you very much for the uh, invitation to come and speak. And I want to just add my welcome to all the distinguished guests here to, tonight. Um, you know, Admiral Brackey, Brian, thanks so much for having us, uh, for having me here. And thanks for everything you do to lead this community so capably. Uh, I will tell you that one thing about uh, I'll, I'll say more about this as the uh, talk goes on, but leadership is everything. And uh, I will tell you that this community, this family, is extremely well led. Admiral Tom Drugan is here. Uh, Tom, we'll, we'll get back uh, to Washington together. General Wilson, are you here today, sir? Okay, okay there you are. Okay, there you are, sir. Great to see you again. And then uh, my good friend and uh, former community lead, Admiral Frank Morneau, is here. And so I just want to uh, recognize the terrific leadership of the community. Let's give all of those folks a round of applause. It's going to be kind of an audience participation talk, so you know, just kind of get that uh, round of applause, the hoo yas you know, all of that going here because uh, we're we're going into the sort of the celebration part of the uh, evening. Okay, I'd ask you all, you know, the Kentucky Derby fans, is it done? Is it done? All right. Okay. All right. So we can put our phones away. All right, and the race is over. Yeah, you've either won or you lost, right? And so anybody win big? Booyah. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. That's good. That's awesome. Uh, I want to, you know, recognize also, uh, just add my recognition and my deep respect uh, to our Gold Star families. We really can't recognize them enough, uh, and particularly those families uh, whose names were added to the wall today. And so let's give them a terrific round of applause. And I'll tell you, uh, as we pick up and gain momentum on this family theme, you know, families come together and families don't forget and families never stop supporting. And so I know in this family that that, uh, you, you never leave the family, do you, right? The Gold Star families are, they remain part of the family. And that support never stops. And then uh, before I get rolling here as well, I just want to thank uh, Ken and Nicole and the uh, EOD Warrior Foundation for putting on such a terrific event, for all the support that they give uh, the EOD community throughout, right? I think in 2016 alone, you know, you've heard a lot of figures, but it was something like $600,000 of support, whether it's scholarships and everything else. And these foundations are just terrific to help us as a family do even more for our family members. And so let's give that uh, foundation one last round of applause as well. So families, you know, they, they take on certain characteristics, don't they, right? If, uh, we're all part of, of this family. And I've been doing a lot of talk about uh, families. I've been doing a lot of talk about toughness. And so I wanna, you know, I'm gonna sort of draw that thread tonight. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing that's really clear about this family, and it's 
I think it's really clear, you know, part of the Navy family in general as well, is that we just have a habit of marrying up, don't we? We marry way, we marry way over our heads. I don't even know how we do it. So let's give our spouses and our families just a, a terrific round of applause. That's worth a standing ovation. Everybody stand up and uh, give your, there we go, thank you, thank you. All right. We cannot thank our spouses enough. And uh, boy, to see everybody looking just stunning tonight, it is, uh, it's just clear we're not worthy, okay? <laughs> okay, so let's uh, pick this up. Um, if we take it on that we are a family, and I, I think that that's a very strong theme, and we think about this uh, attribute of toughness, I don't think that there's a family anywhere in the military that embodies toughness more than the family represented in this room. And uh, you know, this, this family throughout every generation uh, has shown toughness on every battlefield, in every soldier, sailor, airman, and marine to ever wear the coveted crab. And so, Families are defined by generations. So let's take a look at some of the generations that define this family. The first generation, generation of the greatest generation, generation of World War II. And after the surprise attack on December 7th, 1941, it was made immediately clear that bomb disposal experts would be in high demand to defuse enemy ordnance in multiple theaters of conflict. And so it was visionary leaders, right, the, uh, the founders of this family, like Draper Kaufman and Muddy Waters, who brought their experience back from the United Kingdom, their EOD forces, they brought those experiences back to the United States to train the first group of American disposal ears. And so it was. Your first generation of EOD was there at Omaha Beach on D-Day, clearing the way for Allied forces. F folks like uh, Corporal William Brodish and his small 18-man unit from the 27th Ordnance Bomb Disposal Squad who were specifically assigned to the landing party to render safe dud-fired ordnance and projectiles and rockets that had been part of that invasion. Folks like Lieutenant J.G. Alvin Vetter and his shipmates from Naval Combat Demolition Unit 23 who fought alongside Corporal Brodish at Normandy that day. Both men ended up giving their lives on June 6, 1944, and their names are proudly read this morning at the memorial, and we're eternally grateful for their sacrifice. And it wasn't just the Atlantic, EOD forces were in the Pacific. As I said, every theater. Tech Sergeant John Moling and his Marines, shortly after declaring victory at Tinian Island in 1944, now the hard work begins for this team, right, for this family, as they begin the dangerous task of clearing landmines left behind by the enemy. And uh, he ended up giving the ultimate sacrifice when an anti-personnel mine detonated during his removal, but his efforts meant everything for the fight. By virtue of what he did, six new runways were built where enemy ordnance once lay, and that enabled our bombers to come in and have that landing and takeoff spot to take the fight further towards the enemy, putting an end to that conflict. And so your first generation of World War II uh, got us off to a great start. And the war ended, and allies declared victory in Europe and Japan, uh, but this family really never got a break. Right, as soon as that war ended, the Cold War began and brought on your second generation of warriors. They displayed toughness in new battlefields. Underwater demolition teams were in Korea. You know, sometimes people say the Cold War was that war that was won without a shot, without a shot being fired. This team, this family, knows better than that, right? So as I said, your underwater demolition teams were there in Korea, helping to clear enemy mines from Wonsan Harbor, 
before the start of the 861-day naval blockade, the longest blockade in modern history. And your team fought in Vietnam as well. It's hard to find a better example of that attribute of toughness than Staff Sergeant Roy Judkins, who received the Distinguished Service Cross for removing lar live ordnance from the body of two wounded Vietnam, Republic of Vietnam personnel, people he had never met, right? Putting himself in harm's way to save the lives of people he had never met. That's a quality that characterizes this family. And in 1988, it was Navy EOD divers that attributed the mines in the Persian Gulf to Iran, right? Fingerprinted them to Iran, giving the National Command Authority the evidence it needed to launch missiles during Operation Praying Mantis. And so your second generation, the Cold War generation, took everything that that World War II, the greatest generation, had passed on and took it to a new level. The Cold War ended. And then we were rocketed forward to the tragic events of 9-11 that changed everything for our nation, for our military, and certainly for this force. And just as the generations before had done, a third generation rose up to meet that challenge. Third generation of EOD operators, many of you in this room tonight, stood ready to answer our nation's call. And your toughness was on full display for the entire nation to see throughout operations Iraqi freedom and enduring freedom. And there are so many stories of heroism to share. We can't cover them all this evening, but I'd like to highlight just a few. In September of 2009, while providing overwatch for a clearance mission in Kandahar province, Chief Gerardo Sosa's element leader was mortally wounded after stepping on an IED. And while clearing a path to his teammate, Chief Sosa discovered a second IED near the victim and realized that the truth was he was trapped in the middle of an active minefield. And so for 200 yards, he cleared a path for his team and enabled the team to safely extract from that minefield. Two years later, Master Sergeant Joe Delorier left his wife Lisa pregnant with their first child to deploy with the first Special Operations Civil Engineer Squadron to the Helmand Province, where there was a critical shortage of EOD technicians. And while out on patrol, his convoy sustained multiple IED blasts, disabling three vehicles. And for the next four hours, Master Sergeant Delorier cleared his way numerous times getting to those downed vehicles, rendering medical assistance, moving injured personnel to the helicopter landing zone for evacuation. And then on what would be his last trip back to his truck, he himself activated a pressure plate IED resulting in amputations to one of his arms and both of his legs. And despite that, he kept on fighting despite massive bleeding, despite numbness, he continued to pass information about the device that had just injured him, informing his teammates so that they could better complete their mission. I think that Master Sergeant Delorier is here tonight, and I'd like to, Sir, Master Sergeant, if you could raise your hand and let us recognize you. I'll tell you what, Master Sergeant's uh, toughness was clearly displayed on the battlefield, but it didn't stop there. And in the years since his injury, he's continued to celebrate life. He's learned to drive, to cook, change diapers, <laughs> and has even competed in a marathon. So absolutely fantastic.
That's celebrating life. Another story, Staff Sergeant Daniel Ridgway, also deployed to Afghanistan in 2011. And after a team member was struck by an IED, Staff Sergeant Ridgway cleared a 40-meter path, treated his fellow Marines' wounds, turned him over to a corpsman for continued care. And while clearing a landing zone, a 100 meter by 100 meter land, helicopter landing zone, that is a lot of area to clear. To evacuate the casualty, his unit came under heavy fire. But Staff Sergeant Ridgway wasn't phased. And continued clearing the LZ, found and rendered safe five additional IEDs while under fire, and moved his team to safety. Staff Sergeant Ridgway is here tonight. If you could uh, stand, be identified, <laughs> allow us to honor you. And finally, story from this generation that has risen to the challenge of the war on terror, Specialist Samuel Crockett, fast roped into dangerous, hostile enemy territory on October 5th, 2013 with other members of his quick reaction force after multiple IED detonations had taken the lives of four Army Rangers and left 10 others seriously injured. And exposing himself to known threats in the middle of an IED belt, he crawled on his hands and knees, clearing a path to each of these casualties before moving all 14 soldiers to a collection point. Now these stories, these people, these heroes that I've described were all awarded the Silver Star for valor and gallantry in battle. And let's give that group a round of applause. And so even as this third generation has distinguished themselves with toughness, with integrity, with valor, with gallantry, <clears throat> here today we see the emerge, I was down at the school today, and you can see those young EOD technicians learning their trade. This is the fourth generation. This is you. It brings us to today. Your unique skills still in high demand across every geographic combatant command. And I know that when the challenge comes, this fourth generation will rise up like the generations before them. They'll be prepared for the conflict that comes their way because they're inheriting the DNA of the generations before them. You understand the EOD problem sets don't discriminate between peacetime and wartime. As your ethos says, you relentlessly prepare, study your profession, and constantly train for the next fight. And the one thing that's very, very clear from being here tonight, and the one thing that's central to families, is that the core of a family's success, the core of the success of the team in this room is people. At the end of the day, after all, warfare is a human contest. It's minds against minds, teams against teams. We fight and we win in teams. And we build our teammates up and we always have their backs. So this fourth generation, you young EOD technicians, soon to be leaders. And you will be leaders and experts in EOD warfare. You'll be consummate war fighters. But you will also be leaders of character, demonstrating integrity, using initiative to exercise all of the authority that you have been given. And you'll be accountable completely for your team's performance. And you will have the toughness you will inherit the toughness of the generations pre that preceded you because that's the tradition you've inherited. That's how this family does business. 
and the citizens of our country are forever indebted to the United States EOD force. I want to thank you again for the honor of being here for this Memorial Day, this Memorial Weekend. I want to give you all of my thoughts and prayers and my very most celebratory hoo as we move into the second half of the evening. All right, hoo team, thanks very much. God bless you all.